Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. For today's project, we're actually gonna combine a bit of CNC milling with 3D printing. When I first started this YouTube channel, the intention was to have projects that encompass a variety of desktop fabrication tools, hence the name Desktop Makes. It's been mainly 3D printing so far, however, I will be introducing different varieties of desktop fabrication tools, including CNC milling and laser cutting, and a few more in the near future, so stay tuned. All right, now on to today's project. Here's the problem I'm trying to solve. I have this portable laptop monitor that I like to grab whenever I need that second screen to work with. The case also acts as a stand. However, it's just too bulky and I can never get it back far enough on my desk as it hits the wall. I decided I would make my own monitor stand and the approach I came up with involves both desktop milling and 3D printing. The design is pretty simple and I could have 3D printed the whole thing, but I didn't feel it was the most efficient use of tool and time. Since the design has this block shape to it, I figured I would just start with a piece of 2x4 and mill out a channel going across. Now I do want my screen to have a slight tilt to the back and I can't really mill that angle because I just have a three axis machine and I could only mill left, right, back, front and up and down. But this would be something very easy to do with 3D printing. So what I decided to do was have this little insert here separately that I can easily apply an angle to it and then just combine the two pieces together to get my finished product. The desktop mill I'll be using is the Nomad 883 by Carbide 3D. After securing my stock to the vise, I made sure to get a measurement from the top of stock to the vise just to see how much room I have to play with here because the last thing I want to do is crash my end mill to my vise. I started with a facing operation, which just meant I took a small layer off the top to give me a flat surface to work with. I'm using a quarter inch flat end mill with two flutes. After the facing operation, I came in with a 2D pocket tool path. However, I was a little too aggressive and this happened. I stalled my spindle. This is a good time to point out that my strength is in design and 3D printing. CNC machining is a whole new skill I'm trying to learn and I decided I'll take you guys on this journey with me. My current humble goals are just to learn how to use this machine before I break it. Hopefully those of you who have more experience in this category can give me some pointers along the way. Here are the feeds and speeds I went with in Fusion Cam, which include a spindle speed of 10,000 RPMs, a cutting feed rate of 80 inches per minute, which gave me a feed per tooth or chip load of 0 0.004 inches or four thousandths of an inch. Under the passes tabs, I checked multiple depths and set a maximum roughing step down of 0.1 inch. However, this was too aggressive and as you saw, it stalled my spindle, so I brought it down to 0.04 inch. I gave these numbers a try and it worked a lot better. It seemed to run a bit smoother and I didn't stall the spindle again. So I continued the rest of the pocket operation with these settings. Now the Nomad 883 Pro is a desktop CNC machine. So it's not as powerful as your standard machine you would find in a shop. So when you calculate your feeds and speeds, you have to dial it back a little bit and run it a little uh, more conservative. And that's a sweet spot that I'm still trying to figure out. After the roughing 2D pocket operation, I came in with a finishing 2D contour tool path. Next, I 3D printed my insert and then simply attached it to my wooden block. I really like the contrast going on here with the wood and the plastic, the different color schemes and textures going on. And this is something I'd like to experiment more in the future with combining different techniques to really combine different types of materials. And here's the finished product. It turned out to be a perfect fit and my laptop monitor now sits perfectly on my desk and I learned quite a few things and had a lot of fun with this project. I'll now take you through my Fusion 360 design and if you enjoy my teaching style make sure to check out my website at desktopmakes.com where I have full video courses on getting you started with Fusion 360 or taking you to the next level with it. These are very structured online courses that take you step by step in teaching you how to create your own designs. We'll begin by first creating a rectangle and extruding it up just to give us basically our block or our piece of 2x4. So we'll start with the sketch. We'll go to sketch, create sketch, and let's choose our XY or that green red plane right here. 
I'll click on that and then now we'll grab the two point rectangle under sketch rectangle two point rectangle we'll start at our origin and let's go out and just click again we'll release and then click and then D for dimension on our keyboard and we'll dimension this side to be 89 millimeters hit enter and next we'll choose the bottom here and we're going to make that 145. Now this is just what I measured the piece of 2x4 to be, 89 by 145 millimeters. I'm going to click stop sketch and now we're going to extrude this up to give it thickness. And uh, the thickness I'm going to give it is going to be just a little bit uh, smaller than what I actually measured because I'm going to want to come in later and do a facing. Uh, operation which means uh, with the end mill I'm just gonna cut off a layer of the top to make it completely flat so we'll go to create down to extrude select that profile and let's make this 36.5 millimeters and I'll hit enter alright so that gives us that our block basically uh, next let's go ahead and model this insert here so to tackle this, I'm just going to uh, go to uh, sketch, create another sketch, and this time I'm going to choose this side face here. And we'll begin by just creating a two-point rectangle again. So let's grab that two-point rectangle from the sketch menu. And I'm going to position it somewhere about here because that's where I want it to be and just draw it to an approximate shape. And now D for dimension, and I'm going to dimension this edge to be 18 millimeters. Now 18 millimeters because the end mill I'm going to be using I measured it at 20 millimeters and I can't make a hole that's going to be deeper than my end mill in this case it just when I would try to do the side here it, it would uh, collide so I'm just gonna give myself a little wiggle room and just go a little bit smaller than my end mill so that's why I'm choosing 18 here and I'm gonna make the bottom dimension here of 25 millimeters just because I thought that's a good size to work with. All right, now we'll dimension this edge from the edge of our block here. So we'll select both of those, click on both of them. And I want that to be 15 millimeters from the side. So I'm going to hit enter. Okay, next let's go ahead and do this part here. And to do that, I'll just grab the line tool and I'm just gonna rough out the shape. It's something like this. And that's a usual approach I take. I just roughly make this shape and then come back and add some constraints and dimensions. So I know that this line and this line, I want them to be parallel. So I'm going to go to my sketch constraints here, grab my parallel constraint and then click on both of them. All right, now you can see that they're both parallel. They both have the little symbol uh, next to them. So I'm going to now do an angle here, D for dimension here and here. I'm going to make that 70 degrees from that top edge, hit enter. And you can see that they both uh, changed because I made them parallel. All right, D for dimension, let's dimension this edge from this edge. I want that to be five millimeters. So I'm gonna type that in. And I want this uh, bottom edge here to be 13 millimeters from the top. So I'm gonna select both of those and make that 13. And the final dimension is this here, this um, width here. And now this is going to be uh, where the screen is going to slide into and uh, I measured that just below 10 millimeters so I'm going to give myself again another little wiggle room there and type in 10 millimeters uh, and now I can see everything turned from blue to black so I'm fully constrained uh, that means that I can't move any of these sketch entities I can try to drag them they're fully locked in place so I'm going to hit stop sketch and I want to be able to separate this into two different bodies so that uh, if I see here I have my my wooden one and then my one I'm going to 3d print so to do that I'm gonna to go to modify down to split body and my body to split is gonna be the one body that I have my splitting tool I'm gonna to select that and choose the outline of the box that I made there and you can see where it's uh, taking that outline and extending it all the way through. I have an extend uh, splitting tool here. It's checked and then I'm going to click OK. Now if I extend the bodies here under my browser, I can see that I have body one and body two. So let's take a look at that body one and I'm going to bring back my last sketch. So turn on that light bulb if you don't see it. And I'm going to select that inner profile there, hit E for extrude, grab my arrow, and I'm just going to extrude this all the way back. And then for distance, I'm just going to change that to all, and it'll go all the way through, and I'll click OK. Now I have uh, that extrusion through there. 
Okay, so the next thing I did was to give this a little offset in here uh, so that um, I can get a good fit. I'm not exactly sure how the, what the proper number is in this case between milling and 3D printing uh, when you're combining two pieces together. Uh, my Most of my experience has just been with combining parts that are 3D printed together. Um, but what I'm going to do is let's remove body two right now. Um, and we just have this and let's take uh, actually let's remove the sketch as well so now I just have my uh, insert here and why don't we just click twice on this and I'll just uh, rename this insert okay so what I'm going to do is bring these uh, walls in a little bit so I'll go to modify down uh, to press pull here and I'll select this surface here along with this surface and I'm going to do a negative 0 0.2 millimeter so that looks like a good number to start with click OK and if I bring body 2 you'll notice now I have just a little bit of a gap between the two sides uh, so that should allow, allow me to just slide this right in okay so that's basically it um, let's give this some materials to make it look nice so what I'll do is I'll hit A on my keyboard for appearances and for wood uh, I'm gonna expand the wood folder here and I'm basically I'm using pine so let's go ahead and grab pine and let's just drag that over uh, you may have to download it or you would just click the little arrow here if you don't have it in your library uh, for the 3D printed part, I decided I'm going to print this in orange, so let's go to plastic. And there's no orange here under the, the menus, so I'll just grab this glossy yellow, drag it through on this uh, my other body here, the inserts. Then I'm going to double click here on the paint or the color, and I'm going to drag this over. And you can see I can then choose whatever color I want by dragging. Uh, the little across here here so that orange looks to be similar for what I'm going to do and that's uh, that's our model there so now we have our two different bodies and we can take one to uh, our cam environment to mill it out and then the other one we can send it uh, to 3d print